In this video I will show how to make a small styrofoam ball float using ultrasound emitted by transducers. The phenomenon is called levitation and is known when we are tricked by magicians and in occult circles. Before we look at the microbit program, let's take a look at the term duty cycle. As you can see here, it is a number that indicates how many percent of a square wave is high. Here is the program that will make the ultrasonic transducers vibrate at 40,000 Hz, where each vibration takes 25 microseconds. Although we use the microbit's analog output, it actually produces square waves which are digital. But you make an analog cheat value by changing the duty cycle. Here we set it to 50% using the number 511, which is approximately half of 1023. The signal from the microbit is not powerful enough for our purpose. So I found an old amplifier where I connected P0 and ground to the tape recorder input and the transducers to the speaker output. It provides a voltage just under 20 volts from peak to peak. Now I connected my oscilloscope with the A channel to the amplifier and the B channel to the upper transducer to measure the signal that the transducer makes when it receives ultrasound. By moving the transducers I can achieve that the two sets of waves are in phase. I will explain this later. I peel out a small ball of styrofoam and halve it. Now it works. But what do it do if you don't have an amplifier or an oscilloscope lying around? You can make a small amplifier on a breadboard as shown here. It must be supplied with 18 volts and gives an output voltage of approximately 15 volts from peak to peak. The diagram looks like this. The component values are not critical. Now my setup looks like this. Both transducers are connected to the amplifier. I have without success spent countless hours trying to make the levitation work with transducers called UCM40T. I even removed the grill at the front but it had no effect. The transducers give a strong signal but they do not make the standing waves we need. But when the grill is removed you can see the small reflector on top of the crystal that swings at 40,000 Hz when it receives electrical oscillations. When the reflector receives ultrasound the crystal is put into vibrations and then it makes electric signals. Instead I bought two devices that can measure distance using ultrasound HCSR04. I soldered the transducers off. Note that there is both a transmitter and a receiver. They can both send and receive, but they are not equally good at it. I used the transmitters from the two units and marked the leg with a small ring and extended the legs with a wire. Then I cut off a piece of electric pipe and cut a slot as shown here. To give a better contrast I put a piece of black tape on the inside. Now it all looks like this. If you are using one transmitter and one receiver instead of two transmitters, make sure the receiver is at the top. A distance of 1.75 cm gives standing waves by me. I made a rack for it all. If you are teased with static electricity, you can slightly moisten the tube with a brush with water on. The two styrofoam balls settle where the sound waves form nodes. I will try to explain that more detailed.
Sound waves are longitudinal waves which can be displayed with a slinky. When I push a compression is formed and when I pull a refraction is formed. Both parts run along the slinky. Similarly sound waves propagate. It can also be displayed like this. The distance between two compressions is called the wavelength and here the letter lambda is used. The speed of sound in air is just over 340 meters per second depending on the temperature. Now we will look at what happens when sound waves of the same frequency move towards each other. If there is a certain distance between the two sound sources, standing waves will form. At the so-called nodes, the air will not move. Between the nodes, the air will move back and forth. In this drawing you see a pipe with a moving piston. At the opening there is a tuning fork. The sound from the tuning fork is reflected by the piston and the two sets of sound waves meet. If the air column has the correct length, the sound is amplified. A standing wave is formed. There is half a lambda between the nodes. I will now show the experiment. As a sound source, I use a buzzer that is connected to a microbit where the period time is 333 microseconds. It therefore makes a frequency of 3000 Hz. As I move the piston back and forth, there are places where the sound becomes louder, standing waves are formed. I put a mark where the sound becomes loud and measures the distance to 5.7 cm. If 5.7 cm corresponds to half a wavelength, a whole wavelength must be 11.4 cm or 0.114 m. For waves this formula applies. Speed is called V, frequency F and wavelength lambda, which is a Greek letter. By inserting the frequency and wavelength, I can now calculate the speed of sound in air. The theoretical value is 343 meters per second at 20 degrees. Now we want to find out when standing ultrasound waves are formed in our setup. We take another look at the wave formula. If we want to find lambda, we must divide the speed by the frequency. At 20 degrees, the speed is 343 meters per second, which we convert to millimeters. And the frequency is 40,000 hertz. Then the wavelength is 8.6 millimeters. Therefore, half the wavelength is 4.3 millimeters and the distance between two nodes in our experiment is 4 to 5 millimeters. Here I have connected the amplifier and channel A on the oscilloscope to the transmitter and channel B to the receiver. By moving the receiver I can make sure that the two sets of curves are in phase. My old amplifier gave sine curves as there is a capacitor in the output. Here the sine curve comes from the receiver and the square wave is from the amplifier. Here I have marked the good places and you can see that there is a whole wavelength between them. But standing waves can also be formed when the distance is divisible by half the wavelength. Here the signal looks like this on an oscilloscope. In other words, if you do not have an oscilloscope, you can make a distance of 2.5 cm between the transducers. Then move them together 1 mm at a time to see if it works. There should be nodes at every 4.3 mm.